In my final video here about my favorite things in Ableton Live, I'm going to talk about Max for Live. Now, Max for Live is an audio visual programming language that works right inside of Ableton Live. It basically lets you craft your own MIDI audio and even visual plugins that can go right inside of Ableton Live. And what I love most about Max for Live is that it's limitless. So I just want to give a quick example of what Max for Live is capable of and how it kind of functions within Live. So I'm going to play with my bass line a little bit, and you've been hearing throughout these series kind of the bass line being kind of a thumpy, almost reggae-style sounding bass. Let's hear it. I decided for this piece I might want to have the bass be more of a focal element, so I added the amplifier plug-in so to a really kind of gritty sound. Let's hear it. Nice kind of grit to it. I like that amp plug-in. And then I added auto filter so I can manipulate the high end a bit. Let's hear it. So really nice to be able to manipulate that timbre. Now I want this envelope to have a variety of different characters, like maybe go wah, 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 kind of a, kind of a, um, just like crazy filter kind of sound on this. So um, Max for Live has a great LFO built into it, which is, which is worth checking out. So I'll go to our audio effects, and I'm going to look for the Max audio effects. And the LFO is this Max API Control LFO. And we're just going to drop that on the track before the auto filter, though it doesn't really matter where you put it. And you can see it's kind of already going, kind of working. Now we define what we want this to control. So I hit map, and then I click on what I want it to control, a very easy kind of MIDI learn function. And now we see that auto filter is going. Let's hear it. All right, but I'd like it, first off, not to go so low. So I'll adjust the minimum. And I want it to be synced to the beat. So I'll put it synced, and we'll set the bass maybe. We'll leave it to quarter notes. Let's hear this. Try triangle instead. Let's do the bass a little faster. Sixteenth notes, maybe. So there you see, you can have kind of a low frequency oscillator really control anything within live. Totally cool. Now, you can go beyond this, and that because you can control for any parameter live, and LF, this LFO is in live, I can have another LFO control this one. So we can have this train, this chain of effects. So this isn't even getting into Max for live um, programming. This is just using the devices, and they become it becomes you have these multiple layers of programmability. So even if you don't want to get into the programming capabilities of Max for Live, even with these devices, you get a whole bunch more of these kind of modular, connecting module ideas. That's really easy to understand. Let's add another one in right before this one. And this one, I'm going to have control the rate of this one. So again, I hit map, and then I click on what I want it to control, and we see it just grabs all that stuff in here. And this is changing like crazy. Now, I just wanted to jump back and forth between two speeds. So I'll switch to, to square mode. Again, I'll sync it. And maybe this is quarter notes. Let's try it. And we'll adjust our min max. So that's pretty cool. So now I have a really interesting motion in that auto filter, right? It's like it has a nice motion. Let's hear it in the context of the tune now. Very 
very cool, interesting pattern. And again, this can all be manipulated in real time. Now, I'd like to take a moment to kind of go beyond and just show you what it's like to program or what these look like as they're being programmed, these kind of devices themselves. Again, this is a plugin um, that's been designed using a, a kind of a graphical programming language. And if we want to get even further into this device, so we see we have these multiple layers of programmability where you have just the, just the devices themselves can interact with live. And then you can go inside and manipulate the innards of this device itself. To show the inside of this device, we click on this icon right here, and this opens up the Max program and we see how it's programmed. First, this is the presentation view. So it shows kind of the interface that was created for looking in live. And then we can click on the patcher presentation button and show how this is programmed. And we're seeing, um, it's, it's funny because it's actually a lot like live and that you have these individual modules. In live, they always go one after another. Um, in, Ma in Max for live, they can be connected together in a variety of different ways and they send messages to each other. Um, you'll also notice just, just like live has this idea of racks, which is kind of a nesting capability. In Max for live, we have patchers, which is also kind of a nesting capability. So though this looks pretty uh, straightforward in a way, um, we can open up the patchers themselves and see the insides of those and we get more and more information about how this device was created. Now this is a pretty complex device um, but you really can learn a lot from these. Um, they're some of the best documented Max patches I've seen so you really can learn fairly quickly from these devices and the built-in help in Max is quite good. I won't say it's easy to program in Max. It does take some time to figure it out and get working in it but once you get it um, the results are, are, are quite amazing including the ability to manipulate MIDI the ability to manipulate um, audio and even create visual things um, with the add-on or the included package, which is called Jitter. So that's all I wanted to show you with Max for Live, kind of a, a quick teaser. Um, but the really impressive thing is just the, just the um, possibilities. I teach at berkeleymusic.com. I wrote the Advanced Ableton Live course at berkeleymusic.com, and I wrote the Composing and Producing Electronic Music Styles uh, course at berkeleymusic.com. And they're both wonderful courses, and I teach them both. And I would love to see you in my class. And what I'd really like to do is invite you to be part of the Berkeley Music community. Just like the Ableton community and the Max community, uh, berkeleymusic.com is a supportive and um, encouraging place. We're all there trying to learn music. And and we all support each other in a great way. I really love learning about how everyone uses live differently. Everyone has their own kind of methods to work with the program. And we kind of get into how they work and, um, and see all the great things that we can accomplish in this program. And it's really a wonderful place. So I hope you can join me at berkeleymusic.com at one of my courses. And if you don't study with me, come study with this wonderful faculty because we're really there to help you on your journey to becoming a better musician and producer. So um, I hope you can study with me or study with berkeleymusic.com and hopefully I see you in the community.